If you're, if you're listening, could you go back and like our It Ends With Us video? Because, sorry, I put... Bugs. It was Al's first piece of content <laughs> on her own and none of you are viewing it. Branded content that I did by myself. I didn't even ask a babe. Well, like, I sent it to her to, like, just check. <laughs> yeah, you did. And I, there was one typo, but nothing to worry about. But, um, yeah, and it didn't even get 10,000 views. So could you go back and like it for me? You call that following. You know that's what? not following. That's ignoring Ali Mac. And that's not kind. Not loyal. And I'm not looking, loyal. I'm looking for loyalty. <laughs> it's all she cares about. Also, wait, what was I just about to ask you about holiday? Oh my God, guys, I just got back. I got back last night. And I've got a mattress. Oh, for God's sake. Can we shout out Emma Mattress? I love you so much. I will do you the best TikTok you have ever seen. Right, so what is it? Can we get a review? Guys, okay, I don't know whether it's because I had obviously like been, been sleeping on the floor. Sleeping sure. on the floor. So my experience of sleep recently has been quite... Well, babe, you've just... Sorry. You've just been at Soho House Barcelona. I wouldn't say your, your <laughs> level of quality of sleep. Guys, everyone feels so sorry for me. <laughs> I had to escape to Soho House Barcelona because um, I was sleeping on the floor. <laughs> I had it booked and I love my mum. obsessed with her. But we did ask for twin rooms because she's a bit of a mover and a groover. Oh dear, it was a double bed. Twin bed, sorry, not twin rooms. Yeah, it was a double bed. And don't get me wrong, the beds are enormous. but And I couldn't really touch her or feel her. But you know, you never sleep as well. Also... With your, like, I was thinking the other day, like, if we get to travel later this month, we mm. get to stay in a hotel, I would specifically want to sleep in a double bed with you. Yeah, like, Barcelona when we went was perfect. Yeah, perfect. But that was like two beds pushed together, was it? It was, yeah. Was it? Yeah, it was like twin beds, but it was kind of like, they, they made it as a double, but you could feel the edge. Yes. That's what you want. And it was, we had two duvets, that's the difference. Yeah, and that is the difference that because is the difference. she is a duvet hogger, that woman. Also, can I tell you how much of a galley she is? She's such a fan of our content that she will literally tell anyone about it. It's actually Yes, it's so embarrassing. She met this guy on the beach, right? And he was like, I'm going to say he was like late 30s, early 40s. He was there with his nine-year-old daughter, which I thought staying at Soho House with your nine-year-old daughter was a little bit rogue. Because like no on a wife Friday or night, girlfriend. there was no wife or girlfriend to be seen. Linda Reed sniffs him out. She starts chatting to him. She's having a lovely little chat with him about what he does. Oh, he works in the pub industry. Oh, well, I work in the pub industry. La, no la, la. way! And then she, she, he was like, oh, are you the member? And she was like, no, my daughter's the menu. But bearing in mind, I'm like, you know, tits to the sky, just trying to like get down and mind my own business. My mom's yapping this guy's ear off. Anyway, and he was like, oh, what does your daughter do? And was like, Oh, literally, you should have seen her. She sits up. She's like, oh, oh, well, she, she, oh, George, what do you do? And then didn't let me answer. Oh, George, what do you do? Well, she makes content and she has a podcast. Aww. Yeah, 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 so proud. And then she starts, like, saying as if... But as also, if, by the way, the way that she's saying it is exactly how her mum yeah, speaks. and she's like... And she goes like a bit scouse when she gets there. She's like, oh, God, so oh God. Well, she's got a podcast. And then she just, without context, goes, um, you know, hashtag not all men. And I was like, <laughs> sat up from my slumber like, oh, mum, he doesn't know what that means. Can I just say, your mum actually looks so sweet. Oh, so, okay. she's the sweetest. She is the cutest woman. She is so <laughs> adorable. Have you watched our stories when Jane and the, 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 the fucking... <laughs> She's just got to, every time she's the like, fringe. Like she's got, the fringe. Every time I put a camera on that woman, she's like, she's like all pretends to be shy, but she loves it. So she's got a twitch, but she's just yeah. watching her fringe. Anyway, she was crazy. We got matching tattoos. We she's had the mentioned. best time. It was just so fun. She loved the ink. She literally, she's in. She got it on her nanny. She got it on her She wanted, she was like, when I said that on the call, I was like, it's on her nanny. She was like, it's not my nanny. Look. <laughs> It's not my nanny. It's a bit to the side. Oh, babe, it's basically on your nanny. And yes, I am going on holiday to again. 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 Oh, let the girl have a holiday. It's work. I keep saying to everyone that's like, you're going on holiday again. I'm like, it's work. I'm going with my business partner. And it's work. Babe, I was thinking, who was I talking to about We're this? We're all going to hate us. No, I think he'll be so happy about it. But I was, who was I? Oh, I went for brunch with my friend. 
And I was like... What friends? I've got... Babe! She's got friends again now, no, apparently. No, no. Well, I've got a new... <laughs> I've got one new friend who we were kind of like acquaintances because our boyfriends are friends. Oh. Uh, and now like... But we also have loads and loads of mutual friends. And she just messaged me. Like, I really, really rate this because I'm. we invited her to Ascot. Yeah. And like, we got... Like, I, I've known her, you know, she's been in like my circle. She's around. She's around, but we've never hung out one-on-one. -on -one. And she messaged me after Ascot being like, I'd love to like grab a coffee together How nice. which I really rate because I feel like sometimes when you have those social circles and you think oh she's a great girl but like I'll only ever see her when xyz are there yeah it's nice to reach out and be like actually maybe we could just grab, grab a coffee anyway we had the best time ever stop it and um, you didn't even tell me about this new friend I can't believe oh, it I'm so sorry what's her name Panna Panna Parry Le P Price Katie Price <laughs> <laughs> okay anyway doesn't matter why did I start saying this? Oh, I said to her, she was like, because she's a huge, she's a huge galley. And she was, went on her Instagram to show you something. And she was like, look, you guys are the first people that come up on my stories. And I was like, babe, I have realized we, we, now G and I have got into a pattern of life where we actually aren't able to be apart from each other for too long because things don't function. Like the no, we've actually created actually... a bad business plan now because <laughs> it's very reliant on us coexisting. Like 20, like 24 7. Time. Yeah. Like, I don't know how you'll ever move further away and vice versa. Well, Lily Bloom did underperform because we weren't together, as will my content at the screening, I'm sure. Because we're not together. Because we're not together. We can't be really apart from each other for longer than 10 days, I'd say, all the content dries up. Yeah. And our management, they're trying to be clever about it. They're trying to think, like, you know, you've got to, like, be able to do things alone because sometimes it delays us, la la. Can't do can't that. Can't be done. <laughs> at the moment, it can't be done. And we're trying to figure it out, but it can't be done. <laughs> Sorry about it. Sorry about it. Imagine this pod by yourself. What would you say? I'd have nothing Do to say. Do you ever listen to like GK Barry when she goes on there and she talks to herself? I'm thinking, Abby Chatfield. Do you know who she is? Yeah, I do. The Australian girl. She speaks herself. She does solo episodes. I mean, that girl is masterful. I but don't know how she, she does say? it. Like, honestly. A lot. And she says a lot. And I don't know how. No, she must have Jack Chat GPT writing a script or something because there is just no way. There she has a producer. So, like, it'd be like chatting. Like, Rahana would have to, like, you know, chat back so she doesn't feel completely loony. I want to watch F Boy Island. Sorry, just that? talking about Abby Chatfield. She presents this show called F Boy Island. I think they can't swear on Australian TV, but it stands for fuck boy. I think. Really? <laughs> oh my god! I, oh my! Thank God, because I was sorry. Were you really stuck there? But people call them F boys, but I would always just say fuck boy. Sorry, obviously. on Love Island, Australia, they swear a lot. Yeah, because they love a sea bomb, the yeah, Aussies. Yeah, and they use it. If you think I've dropped a couple of sea bombs, my oh, God, you, you best believe those boys yeah. will be sea bombing all over the shop. Yeah, yeah. Um, Sorry to interrupt. Go but, on. Um, speaking of islands and speaking a lot, we do actually have. Oh, voice notes. Oh, so we got to get sorry, on. Sorry, sorry, sorry. sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay. Sorry, sorry. No, sorry. Rahana, thank God you're here. Wait, sorry. Welcome to leave a message. This is Ali and G. I'm Ali. She's G. Hi. And um, this I'm thirsty. Is the, this is the podcast where you leave us messages and we respond to them. And that's it, really. Let's call the galleys. Let's give them a uh, uh, ooh, Spanish name. Not the Spanish name because you've just been to Spain. What's the Spanish name? My Spanish teacher's name is Aldana. Sorry. A hey? Alana. Al Aldana. 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 I love it. Aldana. Aldana. Hey, Gallies. I've been dying to send something in, and this is my perfect opportunity. I'm on holidays with my partner at the time, our first holiday away together, and we're out for dinner. And we see this guy, and he's sitting alone. And one thing leads to another anyway, but we get talking to him, and we invite him out for drinks that evening. So we're out, we're having drinks, and you know what? We get absolutely smashed. We're having the best time ever. We decide, let's take this party back to the apartment. Now, this is when something turns. I start feeling a little bit sick. I'm not feeling the best. The boys, on the other hand, they're having the best time ever. They keep drinking. They're swimming in the pool. And I'm just like, I've got to sit this one out. At this point, I'm like, I've got to go to bed. You two continue your party. Have fun. So I'm in bed. They're doing whatever boys do when they're on holidays and get really drunk. And... I hear after an hour or two, the door closed, the boy's gone, and my boyfriend goes back into bed. At this point now, I feel like utter shit. I think about calling my mom and telling her to arrange a grave plot because this is the end. I need to add as well, this is going to get a bit gruesome. Now, I go to the toilet. I feel like shit. And this is where shit hits the fan, literally. I'm sitting on the toilet, I'm on my period, and I have explosive diarrhea while also getting sick into the bin. 
So I put two and two together and I've decided I think I got food poisoning. I tried to call for my boyfriend who is now currently passed out, balls naked on the bed, not waking up. I'm crying. I'm getting sick. I'm on my period and I'm shitting. I am pull myself together for a second, go into the bedroom, shake my boyfriend. Nothing. But he didn't wake up nonetheless. So I went through that whole maybe four or five hours of that whole sequence of period shit, crying and getting sick while he slept through the whole thing. I wasn't very happy the next morning with him. But I just said you needed to know this. First of all, I'm absolutely delighted. Absolutely delighted. We've got an Irish listener. And we've got an Irish voice noter. And if you find these accents offensive, we're sorry. You can message Rahana and say we're never doing them again. Or you can shove it up your bum. When she went utter shite. So good. So good. Um, um, no, sorry. me, sorry. I've actually never had... <laughs> she was like... Oh, I was thinking about calling my mom and asking her to walk Yeah, no, way. in those moments, I had it in Bali. I'm never sick, but I was literally like, the force at which it leaves your body is so aggressive. Yeah. Like, it's actually one... Of, and you do think, I'm going to die. I'm going to no, die. No, also, you know when you know it's coming and you're hot, you're like sweating. You're hot. Yeah, it, that is Oh, bad. and the boys are frolicking in the pool. That what are they bad. doing? Handstand competitions and you're about to honestly shit your guts out. Horrendous. I've only had it like twice in my life. That being that ill. That bad. Once was when I had norovirus, which was like so shocking. And I was with my boyfriend at the time and had it we twice. both had it. And it was like one on, one off. It was the worst so vibes bad. ever. And you know, when you just need to be naked and well, you're like, literally just... Basically lit like in the loo. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You need to be like on the loo with something to churn it. Yeah, oh, yeah, it's yeah. so bad. It's so bad. I mean, what a crappy boyfriend, babe. I think that's actually a dumpable offence. I was going to say, when when he wakes, you know when, also when they wake How do you sleep through that? That. What's wrong with no, you? No, babe, we've all been there. Oh, well, I've definitely If been someone there. shakes me and screams at me, I hope I would wake up. Yeah, okay, but you know when you wake up and like, uh, you're like completely... Imagine if you're being world. robbed. I know, I was just thinking, imagine if something actually... Like, don't get me wrong, thank God you didn't die and you were just shitting yourself, but imagine something actually... Like, you were being held at gunpoint. Imagine if you were Kimmy K at gunpoint. Do you, he's just lying there. He's sleeping next door. Wakey shaky, baby. You know, also when they when he wakes up. Oh my god. The wrath. The wrath. As and I'd be like, you can you can go and clean up the shit up the walls. You can clean up my diary. You can get me my you can get me my like plain toast all day. I'd and you can rub my back. I would be absolutely tamping fuming raging. Fuming. fuming. That's almost worse than you know when you wake up and you've just dreamt about them like cheating on you. <laughs> it's was like talking. almost that bad. That thing, I was, who was it? Oh, Fran the other day was like, I woke up and I just literally hated him. Hated I him. Babe, I, I know what you mean. Yeah. Oh, and it takes over your body and you're just like, you're actually, I don't actually like you anymore. I don't, I don't want to be anywhere near you. Sometimes it's like so aggressive. I'm like, what is that? So it's too much. What would you do if you woke up like on your wedding morning and you felt that? What? Hated them? Yeah. Do you think what that you would meant? be a reason to like turn around? I thought you meant if you woke up and you felt like you were going to shit yourself and I would say, babe, I think you'd have to call the wedding off. Oh, you'd have to call it white. It's not a good, not, not good a vibes. good dress option for Shitting that yourself. kind of excrement. Um, what would I do if I woke up and I hated them? That's a good question, actually. Because is it a gut feeling? Well, this is a whole separate topic for another day. Go on. But... What is the difference between gut feeling, this is wrong, I shouldn't do it, and just nerves? They I think there's a big difference. Good question. But it's hard to, in the moment, identify. My mum always said on the morning of her first wedding. She knew. She, always. She said, I was so nervous. And I, like, she just, you know, like, obviously you don't really challenge it because you've literally planned everything. And also it's like, you would, should feel nervous, surely a bit. I don't know. Should you? Maybe you shouldn't. Maybe you should just feel gassed. Was and Faye if you don't nervous? feel gassed. I don't think I'd feel nervous. No, think, Faye was gassed. Because I'm like, oh, it's just him. Yeah, she was buzzing. Yeah. I don't think you're supposed to feel that on edge. I don't know. It's I, like when all the girlies say, if you keep getting thrush, it means you shouldn't be with your boyfriend. Have you heard that? <laughs> <laughs> oh yes, that famous proverb. 
I thought okay. that was because they were probably cheating on you. <gasps> I was going to say, oh, uh, no. is that why? they're picking it up from other girls and then passing it, Sorry. On, it on. Have you just got that? <laughs> Sorry, I must go and ring a few of my exes. <laughs> I, think, <laughs> I think you could say the same if it was, I don't know, any other STI. Oh, I just, but I do get thrush a lot. They're actually funny. Is that not right? I think maybe you should go and see the doctor. Do you think if you're having normal safe sex, you shouldn't be getting thrushy funny? Because I just thought it was when I like really went for it and like there was a lot of friction and like bodily fluids involved. I I would just get thrush. I don't think you're having normal safe sex. I think that's, that's, you've fallen the first hurdle there. Oh no, I'm not having normal safe sex, but right now, but when I was with previous partners. when I was being a normal safe sex person. When I was having normal safe sex sex and getting thrush, you think my partner was just being a naughty boy, potentially. Is that really what happened with Pollen? No, I actually didn't get thrush because I never shagged him. <laughs> oh, true. Long distance relationship, true. never really had that problem. Although if I was not seeing him and then I saw him, sorry, how have we gone to thrush? I'm so sorry. If I <laughs> was not with him for a while, like he was away. Yeah. Or I was away or whatever. Um, and then we had a lot of sex, thrush. That is normal. It, that uh, is, normal. Uh, is it? It is normal to have Sometimes sex does. I don't know, hashtag not all army men, but maybe a few <laughs> twos and twos are making four. Maybe hashtag quite a lot of army men. Maybe hashtag all of them. Can, can, sorry, can we get a scientist on this? <laughs> yes, we need to get a scientist. Because I listened to a holistic podcast about this and it's very... The, well, the, vaginal thrush. Yeah, and the, the holistic community <laughs> like to use thrush oh, yeah. as, a, as a reason for exit button really yes vagina no happy well body no i don't happy. know because you can get thrush if you eat too much bread <laughs> <laughs> my mom always, and alcohol yeah my mom oh yeah always, like a bit yeasty on like the beer when we would go to malaysia like and there's so many delicious things to eat and they're all full of wheat and yeast and she would always say oh it's just it's just the bread <laughs> it's just the bread <laughs> oh it's just the bread <laughs> Why did she always get thrush? I don't know. I, d- I also isn't it some like genetic thing that you can be more predisposed? Yeah, to have thrush. Mm-hmm. I haven't had bad thrush in ages, so I'm actually having hashtag healthy sex. Well, let's hashtag get in touch with the holistic community and the scientific community, and maybe we could get an answer. That'd be great. Also, bubble baths. Bubble baths are they bad. Yeah. Oh, bad. Also, you really shouldn't shag in the bath. Have you heard this? It's really bad would to have you, sex in the bath. anyone shag in the bath? That sounds dangerous. Also, it's not nice. Like, the baths are so small. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you can't. It's only when you go away to a nice yeah, bath yeah, place. Yeah, like, and like it's like a, a swimming mansion. pool. Yeah. <laughs> you can't have sex in there either. Or a hot tub. Oh, definitely not a hot tub. Did you ever believe that thing? That, that like... semen lives in hot tubs? I still do believe that. <laughs> Is that not true? It does, it does. If it can go in a test tube and be reinserted, no. they... Hot tubs are too hot. Too hot. Can... I, I've been listening to this book about hormones. I'm not getting in a hot tub with raw and grease, that's all I'm saying. Because <laughs> you never know. You never know, you could get impregnated by him. Imagine. Can you imagine? That'd actually be kind of fun. <laughs> oh, fuck's sake. It'd be like a real throuple. Oh, we just give up and we just lean into polygamy now because oh, why not? Why not? What else is there to do, I suppose? Um, okay. I'll... Sorry, babe. Hope you feel okay now. Love you. Love you. It can live up to a few minutes in a hot tub. <gasps> Knew it. Outside the body sperm can live. Babe, don't worry, I'll tell about to bring... 30 minutes. 30 minutes! In the right conditions. In a hot tub? No, outside, of the body outside the body in the right conditions, it can live for 30 minutes. I do think a hot tub is the right condition for a sperm. I think it's good, hot, nice, <laughs> bubbly conditions. The sperm's like, oh, it's Babe, good in here. Don't worry, I'll get Raw to pack some condoms so that we can, there is absolutely no chance of that. Sorry, can I ask one more question before we move on? Sure. Do you have sex on holiday when you're with your parents? Yeah. Do you? No. Well, and when I'm next door, you're going to be shagging us like rabbits? Maybe once. How many times? Maybe once. <laughs> or your mum? With my mum. <laughs> Will your mum? Oh. I, like my parents, when we used to go on holiday when I was younger, would shag all the time nonstop. Don't know. And I honestly don't want to know because that makes me... Babe, I think I'll have to ask her one night when it's late. Don't ask And we've her. had a drink. Uh, how many times do I have sex? Babe, I'll try for two. I'll try in for th- two weeks. Okay, I'll try for three. Do I'll, four. And I'll, no, there's not a chance in hell. Oh, I'll have a little finger in one three. of them. Three. I'll do three. I will do three. Um, Babe, sorry, last time we made this this agreement and this contract and you said you were going to use a condom and I actually, she told me that I had to have time, three, sex three times with Raw when we went to Greece and I and I did it and I was there lying thinking, I've got to hold my end of the bucket. <laughs> oh, Raw. Oh, I've signed this blood contract with G. I must finish this. Come on. And you she did that did... for the greater good of you. And, she... <laughs> and I'm out there shagging condomless. 
she was like, I said I'd try. And I said, you're a fucking liar. You're a fucking fake I ass never try that hard. I'm going to try now. I'm going to try. I'm on Tinder now. I'm going to try. Yeah, I know what those boys on Tinder can be like. Don't you worry about it. I'll be penidoming. <laughs> Before we continue with this week's episode of Leave a Message, if you want to be part of our group chat, make sure you leave us a voice note using all the details in the episode description. Now, this can be about anything. Obviously, sometimes we ask you for specific topics, but if you've got a story that you think girls need to hear this, then get voice noting. Hi, Gallies. Um, just thought I'd come on here and share a funny holiday story. So my dad's friend, let's call him Bob, he went over to France. He went with his wife and his parents. So bear in mind, his parents were very old. So they took their camper van, got on the, the ferry, had a lovely time in France, except the last day, Bob's mother, an old woman, she lost her passport. Without doing the sensible thing, they just thought, you know what, let's just go home. So they thought, wait, how are we going to get Bob's mum, let's call her Katie. How are we going to get her through passport control? She hasn't got her passport. So they thought, oh, we'll hide her in the camp van. No. So what they did, they put Katie in the camper van's toilet cubicle. They thought she'll be fine in there. It's only two hours on the ferry. We just can't let her out. So they left her in there. They got through passport control, did the ferry, everything was fine. They got back to the UK and they thought, okay, we should let Katie out now because they'd got through passport control in the UK, everything was good. They went to see Katie and unfortunately she had passed away. She had died in the cubicle, in the campfire. She had just passed away. Um, I don't actually know what the logistics are of it all like why she passed away but yeah they opened up the cubicle to find that she was dead so um that's a pretty insane story that i'd share sorry i'm actually not laughing because she died that is the most shocking sh is that real because that there is just sorry no, but I literally, as soon as they said it, I was like, that makes so much sense. Because if she's old and you've put her in a confined space, do you know how long the ferry yeah, takes? Yes, I do. <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> I don't know off the top of my head, but I do know it's long. As an old person as well. Being old, there are a lot of barriers to life. To life? No, sorry. Actually imagine being in that moment. You put your mum... In a, in a cubicle in your caravan and you've left her there for so long that she ceased to exist. I mean, babe, it's not that long. It's not a week on the ferry. How long's the ferry? Eight, a couple of hours. Where in France were they going? Was it just like Dunkirk or was it like further? <laughs> Where was it? Were they going to the Dordogne? Were they going to Cannes? We must know. <laughs> I need to know. Were you in the south of France? Were you in the north of France? I'll ask. What the hell? I was just going to say that's absolutely genius. And now I don't need to worry about paying for my flights or anything. I just need to be smuggled. Smuggled. <laughs> what would you do, babe? If the... I would Sorry. actually die. I'd be mortified. You've opened the cubicle and, and, and you're... She's dead. Your mother... Also, how do you explain to the police? Oh, sorry. We didn't oh, realise. Oh, dear. You'd have to lie and say, well, she just died straight away. And they'd be like, mm, she's been dead for seven hours and oh, you'd be like oh dear. she has actually because she didn't have a passport we smuggled her in well it's hopefully they don't do an autopsy do you have to have an autopsy no. if you just die well only if it's suspicious and to be honest <laughs> <laughs> to be honest that is quite suspicious yeah it is but it's only suspicious if you declare it suspicious like if you're like Dad, sorry, I don't want to use Martin as an example. Love you, may you live till 100, Martin. But my but old OAP dad. Imagine yeah. you went to Boston and you came back and he was dead. Then that would be suspicious because anyone, like, he could have not died. Yeah, how did he, where was he, how did he die? But, like, it's not suspicious you know that you locked her in a cubicle and she died. That's it's not quite suspicious, though. My old dad, bearing in mind, you know, my old dad's sitting on a Maserati at least, you know what I mean? So, like, yeah. if I'd have put him in the boot to drive him across on the Eurostar... Suspicious if you ask me. No, sorry. That is actually probably the worst holiday in history. Why wouldn't you just go to the embassy and just say, oops, forgot our passport. Can we get a replacement one, please? Don't worry, we've got the caravan. Did you ever go on school trips? Yeah, I, I don't I don't love On the, the bus, on the coach. And you had to put the coach on the ferry and then you all... Oh, bad, God. Bad. 
me and Holly went on a few of them and I thought, you know what, babe? I won't be coming again on the school trips <laughs> unless we're flying because it's not no, right. No, it's not right. Why does it take so long? Why must you all be on those? Me and Ollie used to sit on our in the coach, Pullum's coach, shout out Pullum's coaches from the Cotswolds. And we'd just eat like Bourbons and sing um, B.O.B. Do you know that song? Yeah. Oh, um, um, airplanes. It was me like airplanes in the night sky, sky like, like shooting stars. I, I could really use a wish right now. Wish right now. Wish right now. And that's just what we do. Holly's French was oh really good. Oh my God, mine me and Mim did the same. So good. We've also done the same school trip to the trenches. Yes, you've yeah. got to see the trenches and then you've all got to go and see Flanders Fields. And Mim and, then... and I would put this pillow in between us and we'd like, our heads yeah. would like fight over who got more pillows. So cute. Yeah. And then at night we'd like pierce each other's ears. Yeah. Yes. Good vibes. And like corridor. Oh, oh you didn't have boys. We'd like sneak into the boys' oh rooms. Oh my god! Yeah, we'd be like knock knock, and then the teachers would like parole, and like me and Holly would be in the boys' room. We'd have to like hide under the beds or like in the oh, toilet, yeah, like crazy shit. Sorry, but just imagine that school trip, and then someone died in the toilet cubicle. Imagine because you forgot about them on the bus in the ferry, That's and right. they died That's of claustrophobia. Right. Can you die of claustrophobia? Lack of air. Yeah. Lack of oxygen. Poor Hannah having to Google your search history, babe, must be <laughs> whack. If you ever get investigated into, it's going to be quite problematic. <laughs> can, can can you, you kill get, anyone by putting them in? Can kill you get you. thrush from a cheating boyfriend? <laughs> is thrush holistic? <laughs> <laughs> is thrush a real thing, or is it an emotional oh. field? Sorry, what does it say? You can't die from claustrophobia. You can't. No, but suffocation you can no. die from. Yeah, suffocation. Lack of air. Well, R.I.P. to your Katie. Friends. Oh, yeah, yeah R.I.P. to Katie. Katie. Oh, and I hope Bob's okay. Oh. Send Bob our love, would you? Yeah. Please. Number three. Hey, I just saw the story of G asking some stories. And this is a holiday story. But basically, I was in France and we had like this pool. Anyways, it's like a shared pool, but like within like the community, let's just say. So like, you know, I've been a bit constipated for, for, for the last um, few days and I was in the pool and may I add as well the pool was like quite like down like the bottom of the hill and to get to the house you'd have to like walk all the way back up and stuff but obviously because we were all down by the pool the house was all locked up and stuff so I was like oh my god like I need a fucking poo right when I'm in the water and I like panicked because I was in the deep end like swimming under the water so I was like freaking out. Anyways, I was obviously only eight as well. Obviously, don't do what I did. But you guessed it, gals. I shit in the pool. I basically went right down. <laughs> I was like already swimming underwater. I just like pulled my swim caution to the side and shit underwater. Um, that was a very humbling experience. And my shit was just sat right at the bottom of the pool. Right at the bottom of the deep end. May I just add as well, um, it, was a, it was a big one. Because obviously I hadn't been... A, like shit in for a few days I don't know what was happening with my bowel movements and then one of the adults was like oh my god someone's child has pooed in the pool and I literally <laughs> thought it was like a little child like because it was like lots of little kids and I got away with it but I would literally got caught short gals what can you do thanks gallies I'm sorry my main overriding thing is that it sunk I thought it would float who actually you're right it sunk who is supposed to float <laughs> that's what all the Olympic athletes have been saying they've been swimming next to Oh, in the um, to pieces of poo in the in the Seine in the River Seine. Yeah, you're right. Well, because they wouldn't even get in, would they? At one point, they had to it's postpone it. It's so bad. I wouldn't want to swim in the Thames. <laughs> Allegedly, on the Daily Mail, that people there's dead bodies in the Seine. Sorry. Well, yeah, I can imagine there's probably loads in the Thames too. Oh, like, people yeah. trip and fall all the time. Do you remember when they were looking for that acid attack man, and they found like all those bodies in like two hours? Yes. And did you see there was a dolphin washed up? Yeah. The other day in Battersea. What's the dolphin doing in the Thames, babe? You got a bit lost. You've you've gone the wrong way, hun. Like, really the wrong way. You have taken a wrong turn and kept going for far too long. <laughs> Babe, um, I just want to reassure you that if there's one place that you don't need to feel embarrassed about poo, it's here. Because my family and I, I've, I've, I've been in this exact situation. Constipation is common when you're, I, I get on the plane and my poo just, like, disappears. And I'm then constipated for four days. And I know, well, not, where, where does it go? Where is it now? And then what, suddenly you're going to rear your head at me? Yeah, at yeah, 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 in a horrible time. time. Yeah. No, I have a better story. Because this, my friend, <laughs> and she will remain highly anonymous because she actually has a very high-powered job now. My friend, who you haven't met because she lives in America, she is, I mean, she's just the most wacky person of all time. I will never forget, she voice-noted me this one <laughs> 
after she's been out. She went to Oxford, okay? So she's walking back from her night out and she's like talking to me. She's off her head like, oh yeah, this pa- talking to me about whatever had happened that night. She's like, oh my God, I need to have... My poo's coming right now. No, and she was like, and she's voice noting you at the She's voice noting me and she was like, my poo, my poo's coming out right now. And then she was like, okay, just give me a minute. And so she's voice noting me. She was like, I actually can't hold it till I get back to hall. She went into an alley. We were 21. She went into an alleyway and she just pulled her pants down and took a shit. Just did a poo. <laughs> I mean, what are you to do? This is a problem. What are you to do? Like, everyone's got to go. Like, what are you going to do? Like, hold it in and basically shit in your jeans or just go on the road? Oh, uh, do you know what? Being caught out like that is just really difficult. It's really hard. Sometimes it does happen to me. I think it's coming thick and fast and it's coming now and I'm on the middle of Oxford No, Street. it's hilarious. The IBS girlies, honestly, I know a few of them. I've got a few of them in my life. When they go, their face, literally, it's like, I need to go to the toilet now. And it's like angry and it's hot. And you're like... Fuck. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Don't worry, we'll find somewhere. <laughs> There's always somewhere. There's and then the bloody Starbucks somewhere. person is like, mm, don't have the code. And you're like, I'm going to shit on your floor. <laughs> <laughs> okay, last one. We've got to have one more. Ring, ring, galleys. Have I got the holiday disaster story for you? Bit of backstory. I've got a boyfriend. We've been together for about four years now. We were slightly long distance, so he comes to stay at mine for two weeks at a time and then goes home for a week and so on. Because we're long distance and he spends so much time at mine, I obviously don't see his parents very often. So we booked this holiday for the end of last year. I'm all excited because it's my first holiday in about nine years, so I'm buying all these bikinis and holiday clothes. Anyway, we head off for this holiday. Lovely all-inclusive, lots of food. On the last day of our holiday, we were stood around the pool playing one of the games that the hotel hosts, and you could win a pool floaty for the best performance. So my boyfriend and I are breaking it down, giving it all we've got, and we end up winning this pool float. We head back to the pool, and we end up trying to get each other off this pool float. I end up knocking him off, and in doing so, I fall off the float too. Well... My head comes back up from the water and my boyfriend is sending me a big, fat, wide-eye glare. Well, my little B34 cherry chebs managed to slip out my bikini top. So my nipples out and my bright blue bikini top is just floating in the water. (laughs) Because my boyfriend and I were having such fun trying to get each other off the pool floats, his mum was filming the entire time. (laughs) And what do I see? (laughs) My little bikini top flies open and my chebs are on her phone. She now has my little boobies on her phone. But it's okay because we had a great time and they're a lovely family and we're still together to this day. But she also has my boobs still on her phone. But anyway, love the podcast and I can't wait to listen to the next one. Oh, babe. Oh, babe. That's so... I think that... Will, I've only ever been on holiday with one boyfriend's family. Sorry, can I say one thing? Yeah. I'm, uh, sorry. I love the fact that the word Chebs is now being spread for I know, wide. I thought that. I thought... I wonder whether she said that before you or she's been a hashtag influence. We must copyright that, Chebs. Yeah, you better... Co- get it on a top. <gasps> uh, babe. Will you, you do some merch? What are you <laughs> sleeping on? <laughs> she's you, so lazy. Have you seen the people in our DMs being like, I've got to have like big Chebs or little Chebs or like big Chebs. Yeah, and, and you chebs. can wear big Chebs and I'll wear little Chebs. Yeah, really good. Or I'll wear chibi Chebs. Yeah, better. Really good. No, no, all the our DM, we don't babe, we don't need to do any thinking for merch. All the thinking is in our DMs. Okay, well, can you action it? Can you be captain of merch? Yeah, I am captain of merch. Well, you're not doing very... I'm a very good captain. You're not steering the ship very fast. Okay, let me get that on my to-do. I will get <laughs> big chairs, little chairs, that's on my... On yeah, my big chairs, little chairs, cardboard box. Yeah, really good. good. Imagine big chairs and then an arrow and then little chairs and the arrow. Yeah, yeah the really good. I like it a lot. Um, sorry, do you go on holiday a lot with Raw's family? Um, because he obviously a, goes with yours. We've been a he's been on holiday many, many, many more times with my family. Yeah, because my family, I don't know, like, I my mum always teases me. She's like, When will you stop coming on holiday with us? And I'm like, mm, Never, never <laughs> for as long as you make it this fun and nice. Never, babe. She said to me, Well, um, in Seville, she was like, Maybe next year we won't do a summer holiday. And I was like, sorry, what? <laughs> <laughs> and I went to therapy and I was like, they're deserting me. My, pa- my own parents are abandoning me. <laughs> Fuck's sake. <laughs> Maybe she meant next year you could pay. No, that's, I said to James, I was like, you're going to be waiting until you're literally knocking on death's door, babe. Sorry, you knew what you were getting yourself into when you took on two young girls, didn't you? 
Daddy. Oh. Um, yeah, I've only ever been with one boyfriend's family and it was too longly. Centre Park is my favourite place on earth. And it is uncomfortable, isn't it? Like, even, like, sharing the, like, communal, communal space, space. Like, the shagging is awkward. Uh, the, the cozies are awkward. Like, it's also, tricky. Also, it's really interesting to see how different families holiday. I like, know, because you can be very different. My family... Everyone does whatever that like. You can wake up when you want. You can do whatever the hell you want all day. We just eat together. Literally, that's yeah, it. Yeah. Okay. Whereas like some families, like everyone has to like do everything together. Yeah. Our fa- my family's like that. Yeah, and that it's just if you're not used to that. Yeah, it can be a bit, a, a bit of a, a like an assault yeah. in the sense. Or we split in two only ever. So like we'll like Steph and I would always stay at home and sunbathe, and Jess might go and play golf. But like that's the only split we'd ever make. Do yeah. you know what I mean? And like the dads will go and play golf with Jess, like, and then my mums will say, "Would you all go together?" Well, like the food shop or like fun shop, like fun shop. It probably all go together or like there'd be an option so it'd be like option A is the shopping option B is sitting with a beer but like you wouldn't also like if you wanted to go like fine. scuba you're not doing that alone fine not allowed fine. okay there are strict rules <laughs> yeah so I mean it's it's like or everyone like it's different it's so different and if you're not used to it and like a family behaves in a really different way to you it can be really weird it's overwhelming yeah and the cozies are tricky. It's tricky to be in front of your boyfriend's dad in a full cozy. Like, that is that. a bit weird. I did have that. That is weird. Or I even agree. like a mum. Like, I don't know. It's just all a tiny bit like... I agree. And everyone look, views nudity and like modesty and like... In different ways. different ways. Yeah. Like, imagine if you're like just not a full brief type of girl. Like, your bum just does not look good in a full brief. Like, you have to be in a thong. Oh, what are you going to do? Exactly. That, babe, that is me. Yeah. And you can't, and, and then you feel like you can't. Thing. And no. it's like, well, should I wear a swimsuit? But I don't want my or tummy like, to like not tan. No, but also like I used to do it when I would like, you know, when you put us the wrong, because babe, I don't have a, biki- a, a modest bikini bottom. Like uh, to It doesn't exist name. to you. No. Yeah, because it's all about the tan lines. And so I would wear this little sarong. And then, you know, when you like sit down and then you like, like yes. the last minute. And then yeah. You, and then you can't move. You can't tan your back. No. How? Well, even the fact that, like, you know, you know that moment where you've led on your front, tan your back, and you've undone your cozy strap, and then like yes. you want to be free to just kind of like get up, other boobs in place. You're like in doggy, and you're like tying. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But you can't do that, and so you're like literally yeah. contorting to try and tie your cozy strap so no one sees a nipple. Yeah. Oh, it is. It's quite a lot. Oh, guys, also, it's just a nipple. Oh, it's not when you're looking your dad's, oh, your no, no, boyfriend's no. dad in the face. It's it, not just a nipple. I always think that about breastfeeding. How will I ever sit at a table with my in No, you will because it's different. And I'll just have a little blanket. Yeah, I? and pe- you stop caring, I think. Yeah. Like, I know women that were quite conscious of their bodies or, like, quite modest, I would say, and reserved. Yeah. And as soon as they had a kid... Out the window. Of course, because it's Tits not fun- are out, nipples are out, everyone's just doing everything that needs to be done. Well, because it's not functional to be modest when you have a baby. It's not very helpful to be modest. No. Oh, that's so tricky, babe. I would be quite mortified about that. It depends what kind of person she is as well. Like, if she's like, ah, ha, ha, lol. Yeah, and you just, like, never look the dad in the eye again. Oh, God. That ah, ha, ha, lol. Oh, what if it's a bit of a pervy dad? That's the worst. Why has she still got the video on her phone? I saw yeah, it I what's she doing, it watching weird, it at but... night? <laughs> Maybe she is. Maybe she's like, if it's the mum, like I might be a bit like, oh my God, young love. We used to be that fun doing floaty fights. Yeah. And you might just watch it and think, oh, look at her little 34 bees. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Oh, how sweet. How sweet. Wish my 34 bees were still intact, but alas, I've had yeah. two boys. Depends. It depends. On depends. What kind of... Depends on the mum. Yeah. Question of the week. Oh no. Round up debrief. Round up debrief. What are we calling this? Anyway? Richard, do the debrief. Guys, Let's so deep sorry, I just got a tangent one more time. I love Richard. Yeah, Richard, we love your little... She ne- I don't know why she says I love Richard, because she never watches it. And I No, watch Rich, I just listen because I just think this is an audio first experience. And I know you're obsessed with video editing, but I only ever watch the TikTok. Clubs. I just want to say, Rich, I watch the video every week and I'm absolutely obsessed with it. So you keep doing you. And also you should go and read the YouTube comments about the C-bomb graphic. Every- All the guards were loving that. Yeah, they're loving it, Rich. They're loving you. Anyway, uh, Deep- recap. Recrap. <laughs> oh, been recrap. About poo. See what I did there. Um, okay, number one, she's got to be the star of the week. This lady with her, with her. Hundred percent. Also, we didn't even talk about meeting people in like restaurants and hotels. Sorry. Like, do you do that? No, no, sorry. Oh no, sorry. She's not my star of the week. 
The, oh, dead, not... the, the, the dead old person. Well, the hold your horses. You've got carried away. Sorry. Number one is the person that picked up a random boy, had a huge night out with him, and then got food poisoning. And we didn't even talk about the fact that her boyfriend fully made a new best friend on oh, holiday. Holiday friends. And spent all night with him in the pool. I don't like holiday friends. I'm re- My mum is, I can imagine, on another level. Whoa. Whoa, she'll know a lot about your life by the time you've got to like lunch. Do you know what I mean? Oh. It's wild. She's she loves it. Linda, I love you so. so I can't deeply. stand it. I can't stand it. I can't stand it. And I'm so unlike. If you involved. were sat next to me on a sunbed, I would move away because if you kept talking to me, I would yes, move. agreed. I agreed. didn't come here to talk to randomers. I came here to sit in silence. Don't have a kid around my mum. Oh my god, she'll be all over you oh. like a rash. She literally like, oh, babe, she's having that thing. What? Where, where she, she wants grandkids? Yeah. I know. Oh dear. You raise such a slut. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> I can't do it. She's just out here getting thrush all the time, Linda. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> um, number two. The this is, is your star of the week. Star of the week because <gasps> that's dark from you. Babe, what's your star of the week? Not, Holistic thrush. Uh, my star of the week. It's got to be the dead mum, sorry. Poo in the pool. Oh, poo in the pool. It might actually be poo in the pool because I just love kids. Like, why have you just done shit in the pool? That's so good. <laughs> kids are actually mad. They get away with everything. I They're hilarious. I love a kid that just like does what they want. Star of the week. Yeah. But no, the dead person is a really good story and I actually can't believe it and I feel so sorry for Bob. And you should go to therapy, Bob. Yeah, Bob needs to go to therapy. Also, what do you say at the bloody funeral? You'd be like, oh, oh. she died doing what she loved best, caravanning in the south of France. <laughs> at least she got home. If she wouldn't, because also you'd just be sat there thinking if she wouldn't have lost her passport. Well, that's what I mean. You don't know that. She might have just died anyway. True. She might have been at customs immigration and just dropped Yeah, dead. that could have been worse, actually. Yeah. And then you'd have to go through all the paperwork. Oh, yeah, yeah, that. yeah, yeah, yeah. No. No. Uh, number, number four. four Cheb's out. Cheb's out, babe. I love that you're still together and also you could just make jokes about it at Christmas. Do you know what I mean? Just make like or, jokes whenever you can. if it's not funny and they don't find it funny and you don't find it funny, just never talk about it ever again. Never talk about it again. And maybe just say, oh, Barbara, would you want to delete that video now? With me and my tits in the pool. Or I or sometimes do this. I'm like, oh, can I see that picture that you took? And then quickly Oh, scroll. and you delete. Yeah, quickly, quickly. And they didn't know how to get Such to their... Such a little minx They didn't are. know how to get to their recently deleted the old people. So don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Have you got time for question of the week? Epic. Richard, play the jingle now. I love Ali and G at the moment. It's my favourite platform, really. I never, oh, I never on my own... Instagram anymore. Oh, which thank God, babe. Luckily, that you... it used to be none of my business, but now I quite like it. Me too, because it's shit that you would never post on your own. You would thing. never. Like when I look at the videos that we post, you look quite good, actually, annoyingly. But I look like dog, and I just think hilarious. Do you know that I do look that good. Actually, you do, especially when you've got a big old spot. <laughs> Is going on holiday with someone after a month of dating too soon? I voted yes, obviously. Did you? Yeah. No, not too soon. I'd say I disagree. A month, baby. Do you know how fast a month is? I, I did that with Colin. We remember we went to that remote cabin in Scotland. That's not a holiday. Okay, yeah. It's, it, it was a seven hour road trip. That how, was a holiday. How long did you go for? Uh four days. Okay, yeah, that's a holiday then. That's a holiday. A holiday's not like one night. I just think it's such a good way to test the waters. Yeah. Days. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, and sometimes actually a fast track is never like sometimes it's not a good thing to know too much too soon because sometimes your tolerance levels once you fall in love can be greater. So like yeah. there's things that actually once you love them and you've seen all of their amazing qualities, you would tolerate. It's like what Paul Brunson says about like when he does dating coaching and he like get guys that are like a bit shorter than like normal or like mm. a bit skinnier. And he's like, wear a padded jacket and a little heel because that shit will turn people off on the first date. But once they get to know you, they, wouldn't even notice they won't it. care about your skinny shoulders or That's the fact that you're an inch hack. too. Yeah, because he's like, you can, you can just like fight against that and be like, no, no, I'm going to be who I want to be. But actually, like, if you know that's your limiting factor, because I don't know, that's such a good example is height, because girls are just like, I like tall guys. Yeah. Help yourself then. Because you're a fucking great guy yeah. probably, but they're not looking at you because what your hinge says, 5'10". I'm guilty of it. Do you know what I mean? Oh, maybe guys, you should have a head over to Paul Brunson now. Oh, no, you should. He's Does amazing. He a podcast? He's, um, I don't even listen to him on other people's actually. Where did you hear that? Stevie B. Oh. Our arch nemesis, Jake's. He doesn't know we exist. <laughs> um, okay, so the galleys are on Ali's radar. Yes, they've said yes, it's too soon. Much too soon. But only 54% said yes and 46% said no, get oh, on so holiday. So it's basically 50-50. Basically 50-50. So some of you are crazy. 
That's all I'll say. Sorry, last thing I wanted to say, babe. We didn't even talk about how she was like, <laughs> he came to stay with me for two weeks. Obviously, as a long distance relationship. Two weeks on, one week off. Have you ever done that? In a, sorry. Never. Ever. We did a weekend on. Say, so, a, a weekend. weekend yeah. Four days if we were yeah. so lucky. No, 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 no. Yeah, because also then they've got to like, long distance relationships, actually. I'm so comfortable. Long distance relationships, having been in one, I think are like, whack. They're so stupid. It would even be better if you were like, I understand wanting autonomy and independence. Like, I'm not saying move in together tomorrow, but I just think like long distance is so, so impractical and you can make it work. Well, then in that ideal. instance, I would say actually, I'm, like going on holiday early doors is good if you're in a long distance relationship. Yeah. Because like, you otherwise are going to be waiting months to months. know. Months. We could be waiting years. Yeah. To know what they're really like under yeah. duress. Oh, yeah. Under constant surveillance. I used to think about that all the time. I used to think, do you know what? I'm worried. What, we're going to be together three and a half years, four years, five years, move in together, and I absolutely hate him. Right, Rahana's telling us we have to wrap up. So thank you so much for your voice notes this week. We've absolutely loved, loved them. them. Keep them coming, as always. Um, Remember to subscribe. You must subscribe, everybody. We haven't done a subscribe. Yeah, out. please can you subscribe and review. and um, Leave us five stars, because we're trying to get to 1K. Yeah, we're trying to get to 1k I don't even know what that means we're trying, we're to, get trying to get to 1k, 1K. babe when you get okay when you get to a thousand five star reviews it comes right now it says like 768 but we I want it to say 1k okay galleys we're trying to get to 1k so if you could just all like mobilize okay yeah like use a different email address if you've already done it do you know what I mean like just help a girl out um anyway hope if you are on holiday you're having a fabulous time and not shitting yourself in the pool and happy summer we will see you next week goodbye, goodbye.